All right, good evening. It is the 29th of August, 2023. I'm Texas Storm Chasers David Reimer in the midst of monitoring a rapidly intensifying Hurricane Idalia this evening. Just pop on over and take a look at the latest satellite imagery and information from the National Hurricane Center. Idalia has now strengthened to a high-end Category 2 hurricane with maximum sustained winds of 110 miles per hour with higher wind gusts. The extent of the hurricane force winds only go out about, oh, let's see what they've got it at now, 25 miles. So the hurricane force winds with Idalia are actually fairly compact near that developing eye that we're seeing here pop out on infrared imagery. Idalia continues to rapidly intensify tonight. The minimum central pressure has fallen now to 958 millibars or 28.29 inches of mercury. The lower the pressure goes, the more intense the hurricane is becoming. And this has been falling very quickly tonight. Uh, several hours ago, we were in the 970s for the millibar, 972 millibars. So we have fallen 14 millibars in about four to five hours, which is a very significant pressure decline. Typically, a average hurricane, you might see one millibar an hour drop. So 14 in the span of six hours is much more considerable. Uh, Idalia in a position to where it is going to continue intensifying right up until it makes landfall in the Big Bend of Florida in the next 12 hours, now expected to become a Category 4 hurricane. We've been talking about this potential for a few days now, that frankly the potential or the ceiling for this hurricane is uh, up there with Michael and Ida. Or Ian, I guess all three technically. Um, Idalia is going to continue intensifying right up until it makes landfall. It's just a matter of how strong it's going to become before it runs out of time over the open waters of the boiling hot Gulf of Mexico. At 10 p.m. Central, 11 p.m. Eastern, Idalia is 125 miles west of Tampa, 185 miles south of Tallahassee, moving north at a pretty brisk 18 miles per hour. So again, this has about 12, well, let's say 10 to 12 hours left over the Gulf of Mexico, and it continues to rapidly intensify and will continue to do so. We anticipate maximum sustained winds will likely increase to over 130 miles per hour, if not higher, before landfall in the next 10 to 12 hours. The minimum central pressure in all likelihood going to continue falling and may end up in the 940s before all is said and done. Another catastrophic Gulf of Mexico hurricane impacting the Gulf of Mexico facing coast of the United States. Uh, anticipation of this to make landfall next 10 to 12 hours with continuing expansion of the wind field and an increase in the wind fields. Uh, let's pop on over, take a look at the National Hurricane Center graphics again. Here's the latest advisory. Tropical storm force winds now extending out to the west facing coast of Florida, Tampa Bay, all the way up towards near Cedar Key. And then a very small but intense corridor or oval of hurricane force winds, 75 to 110 plus miles per hour. Unfortunately, given the anticipation of the hurricane continuing to intensify and the intensity forecast continuing to be increased in each subsequent update from the National Hurricane Center, the storm surge forecast likewise has increased as well. We're now from 10 to 15 to 12 to 16 feet of inundation above ground level from near the Jefferson County line in the Big Bend down to Yankee Town on the west coast of Florida. Even Tampa Bay, which is going to be pretty far from the landfall location, is still going to have a four to six foot storm surge. And again, the Big Bend region of the Florida coast is extremely susceptible to storm surge impacts because of the geography and the overall positioning of the coast. Uh, unfortunately, this is probably going to result in similar video, similar damage of the Florida coast and parts of it at least that we saw last year with Ian farther south, south of Tampa Bay. Uh, if there is any good that comes out of this, and it's not good in any real aspect. Uh, it's that the portion of the Florida coast that is under the gun here 
for the highest storm surge is some of the least populated part of the Florida coast. That being said, it's going to be bad. Uh, where this thing comes ashore, it's going to look like a bomb went off, unfortunately. Whether that ends up hitting towns or it's a rural area uh, taking out forests. The, it's just going to be bad. You're going to have catastrophic storm surge. You're going to have catastrophic hurricane force winds on the higher end of what you'd get from a major hurricane. And it's just not going to be good. Now, something to note here with Idalia, it is likely to maintain hurricane intensity as it begins to turn north-northeast on Wednesday, bringing hurricane force winds to south and southeastern Georgia. Uh, that's going to cause a lot of power outages, cause a lot of wind damage, and then Idalia is going to turn east and move off the South Carolina coast back into the open Atlantic, which means Idalia may actually intensify again by... Friday, as it gets back over the Atlantic, and for what it's worth, you can kind of see it tries to turn back to the south by Sunday. That part of the forecast is highly conditional, but some data suggests it may decide to get picked back up by this whole thing and turn back west next week, and we may be doing something like this again next week, except on the Atlantic-facing portion of the Florida coast or the southeastern United States, although I doubt it would be anywhere near as intense of a storm as it is tonight. But again, that's what we're dealing with there. We do have storm chasers that have set up. They are located near Keaton Beach, Florida. You can see in their location, um, they've got their exposure turned up high, so the frame rate's low, but not really anything going on yet. You can see it's not a bad night there in the uh, Big Bend of Florida so far. It's a bit of a breeze, some cloudy skies. If we kept this up long enough, you'd see some lightning from the outer bands of Idalia there over the Gulf of Mexico. But again, our folks here are located about 15 feet above sea level and do have a contingency plan to skedaddle out of there if Idalia becomes any more intense than expected. Uh, and again, their evacuation road right there would allow them to get, uh, apparently they need to go about two miles inland to be completely out of a surge zone if the threat of a surge becomes even higher than it is now. So again, our folks out there taking the utmost respect for safety, contingencies in place to skedaddle out of there before Idalia makes landfall tomorrow morning if safety concerns increase. Otherwise, they are located on a beach house or in a beach house that has them a couple stories above ground level. But nevertheless, even with that in mind, one must always have backup plans. So again, 10.20 p.m. Central, 11.20 p.m. Eastern Time, a rapidly intensifying, nearly major hurricane, Idalia, on the cusp of becoming a Category 3 major hurricane tonight as it continues to move north quickly towards a catastrophic landfall tomorrow morning in the Big Bend of Florida. Storm surge over 16 feet possible. That means 16 feet above ground level with battering waves on top of that surge. The potential for winds to exceed 130 miles per hour where the eyewall comes ashore tomorrow morning. 6 to 12 inches of rain across northern Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina over the next several days as Idalia moves northeast and then eventually makes it back out into the open Atlantic by Friday with the potential for that to result in intensification again, and we'll see. We might have a second landfall from Idalia sometime next week if it does end up turning back west towards the United States. We haven't dealt with that in a while, but Ike did something similar back in 2008, if I recall correctly. Um, but again, we'll just, we'll, we'll wait and see. In terms of Texas, nothing's going to be happening from Texas weather standpoint except rip currents on the gulf coast we'll have live streaming storm chasing video up from our folks there in keen beach florida here on the texas storm chasers youtube channel and on the texas storm chasers website and mobile app here pretty shortly uh we've got stephen jones ben mccone trey greenwood brett wright i believe I'm trying to think of names. I haven't had much sleep today. I'm probably forgetting names. If I'm forgetting names, I'm sorry. They'll probably just give me some 
sort of a roasting for that later. But all right, that is going to be it for this update. We have live streaming video of the satellite loop playing on the Texas Storm Chasers YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to have live streaming Storm Chase video up from our folks here shortly. And again, you can always watch all these videos within the Texas Storm Chasers mobile app and on the Texas Storm Chasers website. So we'll be here through the night keeping an eye on things. We'll be doing occasional uh, cut-ins on our radar feed. We'll be keeping an eye on the Storm Chaser feed as well. But the clear message here is that Idalia continues to rapidly intensify. Nearly a major hurricane will be a major hurricane within an hour or two probably and is likely now to become a Category 4 hurricane with maximum sustained winds near 130 miles per hour if not higher before making a devastating landfall in the next 10 to 12 hours in the Big Bend region of the state of Florida. I'm Texas Storm Chasers David Reimer. We'll keep an eye on things. I encourage y'all to do the same. Y'all have a good night. God bless. We're going to be here.